All right, I'm double trouble. I've got both hands full now. So, um, well, so glad you're here. I'm Tammy Parks. I'm from New River Community College. Um, I am that nice vanilla um, art center between the two science Oreo cookies. So we want to make sure we mix it up for you all. Um, so I'm here today to talk about art and how we are trying to use different technologies to reach a wide variety of students. Some fully online, some hybrid, some some face to face. I don't think we should forget technology actually with the ones who are in the classroom with us as well. So um, this is my information. I can go back to it if you wish, but please write me down if you have any questions. All right, so I try to use open education resources. Um, I think they're very important. I'm gonna focus on some different areas. Um, my my, com my comrades are in the next room and they're talking about Otis. We use it and I'll talk to you a little bit about it. But um, I think humor in technology is very important. So if you're in the back, because I know those students, I know who you are. Yes, you run to the back every time. But um, the great thing about open ed, especially like we're gonna talk about things like essay writing, I can't require them, it's art class. They can't buy two books on how to write an essay. So what we do is, we're going to um, save them a little bit of money. And so this is a lovely original here picture. Of course, they're nude and she says, oh, I'm so excited now we can afford clothes. So don't forget your humor. Um, showing them how to use a little research. Um, but a big thing that we wanna do is we actually wanna open up the communication between those students. Even though you're writing essays, you should be talking about the essays as well. Okay, and please feel free, questions as I go along. I can talk forever. Um, this is sort of how it works. I'm a little bit of a minimalist. I think if you give them too much that they get overwhelmed and like, oh my God, there's 40 documents, I'm never gonna get through it. So for instance, these are some of my ideas. Uh, let's talk about art history. We have at New River something called the Advanced Learners. And that is the idea of trying to create courses where our, our top students, our best and brightest, are challenged and are allowed to research and investigate things that they find personally interesting, okay? So as we go through along in this art history course, what I request is every few chapters, they're allowed to choose what they want to write about and research and investigate, come up with a thesis statement, write their lovely essay papers. But they need help because even though they're our best and brightest, essay writing is not the most important things in their lives in the past. So. It's so easy, look at this very distilled design. It's nice elementary colors. It's easy and user friendly for me, which is number one, okay? So as they would click, as I'm setting it up, what it does is it sends a specific web address to the students, which never changes, can I say? Never changes. I can add things to it. I can delete things from it. And then when I send it to them and they open it up, this is sort of what they see. They see a few documents. Each one tells them very specifically, this is the title, with a small introduction of what you're going to find in this particular document. They can be actual documents. They could be web pages that I send them to. It's really nice because you can get some variety. I can upload lectures and just send them to Panopto and listen to my, my short address or welcome or whatever. whatever. And of course, I think mostly with the technology, I have to go find the things that help them write an essay in art because art is different from writing a biology essay, okay? Our intentions are different. So what I do is I try to really personalize it using the technology that will help them best and it takes hours. I just wish I had an entourage, I do, so. <laughs> Um, so what we do in the advanced learner course is everyone chooses their topic, investigates it. I, of course, will be involved in this process, but what they're required to do is I will break them into groups and they're required to read each other's essays, okay? And they're required to submit questions to each other. Is there something that I did not understand? Is there something I'd like you to explicate a little bit more? Is there something, you, did you think about adding this to the paper? And they have guidelines in their syllabus, so they kind of have something to go for. Um, and I do open up the possibilities. They can use the chat room in Blackboard. Um, they can use the actual blog itself where people 
put their essays, then they can communicate on the blog asking there. I've even opened it up. They will send me screenshots of their conversations they had together on instant message. I'm fine with that. You have talked to each other, and sometimes if it's a little bit more relaxed, they even seem to enjoy the process more. So I'm giving them more possibilities that way. Does that make sense? I think sometimes by only saying you can do it one way, and I'm telling you, screenshot is my favorite thing in the world, as you can see in my lovely PowerPoint here. <laughs> um, on my online classes, hybrid, face-to-face, there's always lectures online. I have foreign students who English is sometimes a little bit of a challenge, especially if you're using specific grammar in art, biology, whatever it may be. So what I do and I make sure, I also have a welcome lecture. So the welcome video, I use Panopto, load it up, and I explain to them also in words what's expected of them. So watch this short introduction video. This is what I expect. Hi, I'm here to help you too. Please don't forget that. It's really nice sometimes for these students who you will never see ever in reality. We have those to hear your voice and let them know that you really do care that they learn. And so just having a call me, let me know, I'm in it with you. Okay? And once again, I chose a fun one. Humor, humor. All right. We've also developed international travel as one of our hybrids. So it brings a whole new level of, oh my gosh, because you have to make plans and organize travel way before a Blackboard course opens up and you're all involved. So I will actually use, once again, our Otis and stuff to put things on and order, and we'll start using social media. Does everyone use social media in some form or fashion? Never. I, I, I have to admit, I, I'm a fan, as you will see. So we just got back from England and Scotland, a world-shaking moving event for our students. They posted a lot. So did I. This is one of, let me tell you, many posts. I had 77 likes on like an average which means that was the people who actually took a moment to say, oh, that's cool, that's not everybody who saw it, and that doesn't always include the comments as well. So we were kind of documenting our trip as we went. I asked the students, please do the same. They were amazed at what happened and the responses that they got. For students especially, before they're my students, I will then send them all of this using that, that Otis address. So all of their packing, all of their itineraries, all of the stuff that I want to give them, but I don't have the opportunity because Blackboard is not available yet, here you go. Welcome. Welcome to the class. Let's get ready to go. If you'll notice over here, I mean, it can be things like I got them ready for exchanging currency, for money, for all the things that they're going to need. And right here, of course, I can go ahead and send them itineraries way ahead of time. And anyone who's interested, it's kind of nice because you're not just stuck in the, you can open it up to the greater community as well. So if you're interested in getting people interested in your courses, you can authorize that and let them see it without them being a student right at that moment. You might get some more students who, and that's, I, we got about five new students that year, so it was lovely. Instagram. <laughs> I am an artist, so we documented as we went through, we posted all over, my students did. Um, and also, I started to do this as just a way to let my students know I'm a human being. So I have what's called an artist of the day that I post on my Facebook. Now, for those of you who feel that there are lines and borders, totally understand. It is very easy to create a Facebook post, a Twitter account, an Instagram that is just purely your professional account. You know, that's all you ever do is coursework, stuff related to your school, please do. But as you can see, I will go through and try to find the most interesting things, what's happening in the world now, and post it on my Facebook account. I get hundreds and hundreds of kids that contact me now, steal past students and, and present students. This is a beautiful one. This is an artist who is using 3D printing to try to reprint some of the artwork that's being destroyed by ISIS currently. And so, go art, yay. 
Okay, we've also created Facebook pages for our Fine Arts Club, our International Ed group. That way we can start getting the message out to all of our students what is going on in the arts on the campus. Okay, in art, we kind of almost look at studios as, as hybridized. They're doing a lot of work on their own, <laughs> and they still need help. Um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about iPads, digital portfolios, of course, 3D printers, pens, and I think this is the most important thing that I'm gonna leave you with today. Every time I try something new, it is never perfect. There's always a lot of bugaboos that have to be worked out. There has to be tweaks. There has to be stuff that I change, but I found also when I discover just the right thing, it's worth it. So what we're doing now is in drawing classes, we're starting to, instead of just making it purely drawing, we're introducing the iPads in the class as well. If you would like to do your sketchbook, some of them using Autodesk Sketchbook Pro, feel free. Okay, opening up. If you don't want to and you want to stay, continue with what you're doing with your pencil and paper. Okay, also, this is the real push where we have to go now. And so, I really loved it hearing in Blackboard portfolios. That is the new thing. They're e portfolios. We've been doing a lot with Google right, for because it's so, such easy access. But as you'll see here, we're trying to get all of our students to start working on their actual e portfolios. So when they're getting ready to transfer to places like VCU, JMU, they're really ready and they're above the crowd. Okay? Um, also, New River, we are 3D printer crazy. We have got so many of them, and we're going to start utilizing them in the sculpture classrooms. So along with the 3D doodler pens, so we're really going to start thinking about 2D meets the 3D world. So come down if you ever have a chance. Welcome. Just call me. I'll give you a tour. Um, also, we are designing an entire new graphic design program. And Virginia Western, we love you because we're, we looked at you in order to get as our basis because you do the right things and we just want to build, you know, build our own version. But what we're talking about now is using our technology to create art for the school. You can't actually graffiti the side of the building, but you can take photographs of it and virtually graffiti it and hang it on the walls and feel good about it. So um, our other big thing is we are looking to take our graphic design students and have them actually produce work for the college itself. So if we're going to have them design quote unquote maps as one of their assignments, we'd really like them to look at New River's campus. And you know what? Sometimes they come up with better graphic designs that we have sent off to companies to create. So we're hoping to really get them and make them a part of our curriculum. With the essays and art history, the essays are then linked onto our art history website so that students, local community, can then actually read those essays by students and learn more about art in general. And current students, do you want some help? Do you need some examples? Go look at what our, our, our advanced learner kids have done. Also, this is the hardest part. You have to go find the right technology for exactly what you do. This is a particular textbook by Bridget Mongian. She's a friend of mine in the same graduate uh, program I was in. And she has a book that is 3D technology in fine art and craft. It is created for people, professors, who want to bring that element into their courses, how to do it, how to use it. So sometimes it takes months to find the right stuff. But once you do, then you have this amazing thing that you can work with and implement into your classroom. So, and I wanted to use this as an illustration to you guys. To remember though, I know the course is about technology. I know that we're all talking about it. And I love these two extreme viewpoints. If you'll look at Bruvel, 3D modeling and 3D printing is as much of a revolution as a creative tool for artists as the invention of perspective at the beginning of the Renaissance period in Italy. It has changed forever the paradigm of artistic expression, okay? But within the same text, it is an important token reminder for the younger generation and their tutors that above and beyond the abundance of electronic marvels, the human vision and imagination remains the most important element, and that its nurture should not be replaced by excessive reliance on devices. 
So within that, I think us as educators, that's our job too. We want to use these techno technological tools, but we want to make sure that we're teaching them the most important parts, how to be creative individual thinkers. Yay. Okay. Um, one of the things that we're talking about, this is not in stone yet, but we're also wondering about paper testing versus screen testing. We have folks who respond better to a traditional form, some that would really prefer to just do it on the computer because that's their comfort level. Um, and one of the other things that we're talking about is, um, and I love this one, I'm thinking of putting on my door for, for next semester. <clears throat> But in this one, one of the things that we were bringing up in our, in our conversations were, if you had that Monday and Wednesday and Friday class, what if you wanted to hybridize it so that if you're giving a test every other Friday, would you want to make that Friday optional, come and take it, or you can take it in the distance ed center whenever you wanted to by a certain time, and opening up that hour for you know they're free you know they don't have a problem finding your other office hours or connecting with you, they can come and see you during that time. So that's one of the things we're also talking about. Can we use technology to open up some of those quote unquote office hours for students? And most importantly, oh my goodness gracious. All right, take the small steps, but I think this is very important. And I think that Louie and Elizabeth will agree with me when I say this, that if you're going to use whatever it is, be the king and the queen of that technology, all right? Know it well, know how to use it, make sure it's right for you, and yes, be calm. I just got back from England, so you know we had to do it, but, but yay. But I, I do think that's important, so I hope that you understood that also my PowerPoint is all about art. It's about color and visual images to make you listen to what I'm saying as I say it too. And I know PowerPoints are not exciting anymore, but I still love these things. These make me happy and it makes my students pay attention. So yeah, any questions? Did I just tell you everything you needed to know? Yes, Gary. Can you say more about your 3D printer that project at your school, what people do with it? Yeah, oh, at this stage, one of the problems that we have in sculpture is it's easy in other classes to create artwork that can be, become part of the college. You can do drawings, you can do printmaking, there's a copy you can make for the class to leave behind at New River. You can't do that in sculpture. It's not like you can go up and go, I need that head. You can't take that head home. So one of our innovative tools now is we can actually scan their artworks and then create versions of it and kind of create our first project that we're going to have is everyone will do their busts and then we're going to create a totem pole that we're going to actually 3D put together. If you use the stuff like your, for nail polish um, and you put it in a bath, you can actually, it's like a super glue adhesive with these 3D materials. So that's going to be our first like collaborative project because that's the other thing. It's a tool that's mostly for assembly line, invention, creating cogs and button, you know, things to, you know, how can we then as artists take it and turn it into an artistic tool? Which is why she is so important because Bridget is using that 3D printer as an art tool, not as an engineering tool or, or assembly line concept. She's taking it to a different level. So, great question. Yes? I, I use Pinterest in my, um, on my bio. Well, Pinterest is usually where I get my PowerPoints. Because <laughs> I give, I'll give everybody credit as I go through. But literally, as I'm looking at the whole semester and I'm looking at still lives, let's go find the ones that are the most amazing still lives. So always, Pinterest is genius because it's just so easy to use. And now that they put that little app on Google, you can even go in the Googles and pin everything you wanted for live. So you're not just stuck in one format and browser. So it's pretty exciting. Question. Tim, could you tell the group how you use technology to teach art for dual enrollment classes in area high schools? 
Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm, I, get to, I get to see me on the big screen. Uh, we do have a program with Giles. So Giles High School and Narrows High School. We have about 40 students who are in a part of the area that, I mean, they're a little farther away from, from easy to get to access. And so there are four courses I know of that we have at New River, but on, on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I will go to the room and we get to be satellited over, so it's direct. It's, it's I'm in their classroom with them. They can ask me questions. It's really lovely. I, I think that's the best way dual can be done. You're getting that college professor, you're getting those other college students. So they're also hearing the questions that the college kids in your room are asking, not just the high school environment. You know, they're really kind of like stepping out of their comfort zone, which is good for them, because it kind of gives them a little bit more, of a, like they're kind of there with you, except a little virtually, but yeah. Yes, that's a great one. Sorry, I forgot about those poor little duel. I do a lot. It's all good, but I enjoy it. Hey, any other questions? Yay. Well, please feel free to, to yell at me if you have any. Um, I would love to contact your art folks. And anyone who is interested in wanting to do Otis, you're more than welcome. If you just contact New River, they'll set you up an account. It's free. You can use it and however you wish to, and they're all into sharing. So thank you.